Taking a look at the Philips CDI today, we're going to do a little general look at some of the models that I own and then a deep dive repair into a CDI 470 that I've got. So this is the uh, CDI 210 and the 615. The 200 series was your general consumer sort of grade um, CDI entry level consumption model and then the 600 series was designed for professional applications and software development. Okay, we'll take a closer look at the 651. Um, input and outputs for keyboard and mouse, but uh, your normal connections for a CDI with the addition of a floppy drive, so much more user friendly for a developer point of view. This was also used for classrooms and uh, educational purposes as well. So the 200 series again was the your general consumption, your run of the mill, boggy basic sort of uh, player that uh, came to market. Um, no bells and whistles on this. Um, there were models that came with and without the MPEG cartridge. Taking a look at the back, um, you can see there's a lot more ports on the 615 compared to the 210. Uh, but like you say, and there's, uh, you can connect your TV through the uh, 210. This was the uh, digital video cartridge which was available on some models as an optional extra. Um, not all models came with it as standard, or if the unit obviously packed up, you needed to replace it. It was a standalone package. You could you know, literally open up the back of the machine and slot a new one in, or if it didn't have one, obviously fit a new one, so that capability was then added to the machine. This was quite an expensive unit to purchase back in the day. It was almost as, uh, as pricey as the actual player itself. And again, it's all proprietary, all contained inside this little caddy and slots into the back of the machine on the 210. The 615 has one built in, so no need for messing around. Same as the 470, that one's got a, a digital video card already built into the machine. I've no idea why uh, that wasn't baked into the machine to start with. So we'll take a look at the uh, controllers. This is the more games console type controller. Um, quite sought after this one. It does make the units far more playable and you'll see this when you see the other selection of controllers that do come with the machines. These really are just more like remotes. Um, they're not, I don't think there's any intention really for these were ever really designed to play any sort of decent game. Um, interactive movies and stuff like that, fine, but uh, they're very, very cumbersome and, and not very good and you have to point them at the system to get them to be recognised, which can be quite frustrating. The build quality is not superb, um, but it does the job, I suppose. So this is the uh, games console version of it, the 450. This was um, brought into play to compete with the games console market that was booming at that time. That's your uh, digital video cartridge. So it did have a lot of pluses. You know, it did bring all of the benefits of the CDI system in a cheaper form. So as you can see, it's very, very basic. The outputs are very basic. Proprietary power supply there, like a, an Ethernet jack, um, which was a bit weird, but you know, very, very basic machine, cost reduced, basically to go up against your games consoles, but you could play your films on it. So this is the 470. So again, it was classed as a budget system. Um, everything was stripped out of it. There wasn't, again, no bells and whistles. Um, it was reduced in size so that it obviously to reduce the, um, you know, the materials and everything that was needed. Very basic um, outputs in out the back. Again, very, very basic. And the problem with this machine was it wouldn't save the time and date and it wouldn't read discs very well. Okay, first things first is to get the outer casing off, so remove these two screws on either side of the machine, and then these three screws on the back. That basically allows you to get access to most of the uh, you know, service in the, the actual thing. Um, you can obviously power supply, the digital video cartridge which is built inside. Again, it's, it strikes me weird that the, the cartridge wasn't baked into this system, so you had you know, MPEG-1 playback from the start, but uh, you know, there you go. Um, so what I've got to do, I've, I've got to get basically the DVD drive lifted, the MPEG cart and the carrier out. Uh, that will allow me then to get the motherboard out. Um, I don't know if you've seen my other videos, but um, the timekeeper uh, on this is a bit weird. It's, it's housed inside a chip. Uh, there is a battery inside an actual chip, um, and that's called the timekeeper. The problem is when that battery goes flat, the system forgets its time and date, and it can cause quite a few issues with the player itself. Um, so, like a fool, I bought um, two new timekeepers off eBay, uh, being said that they were new old stock. Um, I fitted one, the last one um, to a player on my last video, uh, and it didn't work. 
Um, I was doing these machines at the same time, um, and the, the problem is I fitted the timekeeper. The only difference I did on this machine is I socketed it, so I didn't have to unsolder it or mess around. I could just pop the timekeeper off, and I'll do the um, timekeeper mod uh, on these, this particular model as well. So here I am just de-socketing the uh, original timekeeper. In hindsight, like I say, I probably could, shouldn't have bothered. I could have just ground the top off the timekeeper in situ. Um, but uh, it was nice to socket this, so that in any future endeavours in this machine, that timekeeper can be taken on and off as I need to. So, obviously, with the timekeeper now free from its holding, we can get a new uh, socket put in. And with that socket, like I say, it allows me to... Uh, take things on and off as I actually please and which was great in this instance because the new type schema didn't work um, quite upset about that I paid I think it was like 29 pounds for uh, what was supposedly a brand new um, pair of timekeepers um, so properly been stuffed there um, it's not all total loss though because like I say it's grind the end off the off it you can um, expose the positive and negative terminal what would have gone to the battery. Um, a couple of little bridge wires that go to a, a 2032 um, battery holder. And then you can just pop a brand new CR2032 in there. Um, it's not a rechargeable, what do you think daft? I think they've, you know, they've gone to this trouble to make this. Why didn't they make it a rechargeable battery inside? So when the system's powered on, it would recharge it. Because I don't think those chips would have been cheap in the manufacturing process. But uh, anyway, where we go. Once this is all fitted, then obviously I'm, I'm going to go through that. Uh, it's a pretty easy mod. There's nothing to it really from an external point of view. Once you find the battery terminals, just like I say, a couple of bridge wires. I just had a couple of these um, coin cell holders loafing around. That's where it sits in the machine. Um, as a note, when I did originally glue it on first time round, I glued it on completely parallel to the rest of the machine. Um, unfortunately, I had to move it. But that's it back up and running and we've got a, a working clock battery there so we've got it saving the time and date and fortunately then i found that the cd drive wasn't reading the discs properly um it was starting to skip and mess around and do all sorts of weird and wonderful things so i had to get it uh, all back to bits again um paid about 20 quid for a laser it took about three weeks to turn up pop that in and hey presto oh, i wasn't holding out much hope because my purchases lately haven't been very good uh, been, I've been working on a Game Gear lately and that's turned into a complete disaster, but hey-ho, new CD lens, uh, on off we go. I've been using the player to do some of these uh, bits and bobs and demo some of the bits and bobs and games. I'm going to do a top five for people that are new to the CDI, uh, gives them an opportunity to play some of the best games. But if you've made it this far, uh, thank you very much and uh, I'll catch you again in the next video. Bye for now.